Hey everyone, this is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Bootstrap's modals inside of your website. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm just going to basically cover the basics of how to get one set up, how you can uh, do some simple modifications to it, some CSS modifications, and then also how you can call it through JavaScript and even call some code after you actually close out your modal as well. So I'm going to show you a quick example before we dive in here. And if you want to check out all the code, go to my website, learningdojo.net, and you can see this embedded in uh, my latest post and you can go in and check this out as well. So or if you just search for bootstrap modal, then you can get this code as well and just play around with it. All right, so this is what we're gonna be building. We're starting out with a project here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up inside of Sublime Text and I've already attached my bootstrap, uh, my jQuery, my bootstrap CSS, and then also my bootstrap JavaScript. Now I'm going to be calling my own code. So I have actually inside of this JS folder, I've created a, a mycode.js. And if I double click on that, there's really nothing in here to begin with. We'll go ahead and create that code later, but I just wanna have that pulled up for now. So the first thing is inside of this body, after I've attached all my code, I'm gonna go ahead and start creating some body text or some body code in there. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a bootstrap container to begin with. This is gonna contain all of my items inside of this, and so I get the functionality of bootstrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and say container, and then this is where my code is going to be. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to have a simple just kind of header and paragraph text and so i'm just going to copy that come over here and paste that right there you can go ahead pause the video if you need to type that out or just type something it's really just instructions to the end user to say hey what you need to do is click on one of these buttons below all right so that's what we need to do is we now do need to create the buttons and so i'm just going to make a comment here and then just hit command backslash for the comments and I'm just gonna have this. I like to comment my code. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is the instructions. And then there we go. All right, so now in the buttons, I'm gonna create uh, a button here. So I'm gonna say button class is going to be button. And then we're gonna go ahead, actually, we're gonna give it a type of button, first of all. And the class is actually going to be bootstrap btn and then btn dash primary so we're going to say btn dash primary all right so now i'm going to put some text in there for now so i'm going to say show modal just make sure i spell that right now i'm going to come back into my java or my safari here hit refresh and this is what i should say so we have the show modal it really does nothing at this point it basically just has some of the styling, the basic styling um, in here to begin with. So, all right, and I misspelled primary. That's why we're not getting that blue color. There we go, so now that's working there. All right, so now let's go ahead and create another button. And what we're gonna do, the second button, we're actually going to trigger this or use this to trigger it with JavaScript. So we're just gonna create it for now and come back to it. So this is also going to be a button. And we're gonna say this class is going to be btn slash dash or sorry btn and then btn dash so let's try this one secondary and then we need some text in there so we're going to go ahead and call this or javascript js show modal just so we know what the difference is hit refresh come over here and there we go all right let's make sure let's just change both of those to the primary so we got the show modal show JavaScript, show modal as well. So we have those to begin with. Now we actually need to launch our modal. So the modal is kind of like a pop-up. So when they click on it, it's content that they currently don't see, but as soon as they click on it, let me come back into this example. As soon as they click on it, it pops up with this content, which could have a title, could have a close button, could have some text right here and some additional buttons. And then anywhere that the user actually clicks on, on the right-hand side, it will dismiss that modal or if they click on the exit it'll dismiss that modal too so that's the idea is we want to have some additional content that is prompted when the user actually clicks on this all right so the first thing you need to do inside there's a couple things that we need to do on the button 
not the one that we're going to be calling with JavaScript, but the button that we're actually going to be calling just by clicking on it, the modal. So we're going to say data dash toggle equals, and within quotes, we're going to say modal. And the next thing I want to do is say data dash target equals, and then within quotes, we're going to say ID sign or hashtag my modal. That's how we reference this when we create our modal later. We'll reference which modal to actually create in case we have a couple of them by using the ID and we'll create that here in a second. All right, so now we're good on that button. We'll actually use jQuery to call the second one later. But let's go ahead and come into creating our modal. So the first thing I wanna do in the modal part is I wanna make sure I have a comment. And so now within the first div tag, I'm gonna call this modal dash dialog. Everything in the modal has to actually be wrapped up in this class tag. The next thing I wanna do is actually create the content for the modal. So we're gonna create another div tag. We're get, we have a couple div tags that, are actually, that we're actually going to be using. So I'm gonna say modal dash content. This is going to be the content for the modal. And inside of there, you can have a heading, a header, uh, there's the regular content, the actual text, which is basically the body. And then you can have a title, or sorry, you can have a footer that usually has like the buttons or some type of action that you want the user to do. So in s first thing I wanna do, let's go ahead and create a div tag, and then say, we're gonna call this one modal dash header. And then in the header, let's go ahead and create, we're gonna create two things. We're gonna create another button, which is gonna be the close button. So this is gonna be a type button. And then the class is going to be close. And the data dash dismiss equals modal. That just lets Bootstrap know that this is how it's going to be closed. This close button will be closed uh, like a modal. So as soon as it gets dismissed, it's going to exit or animate out like it was a modal. All right, now within that button, we're just gonna just go ahead and call this close. It really doesn't matter what you type in there because it's not actually visible to the user. Let me actually just put all of this on one line. The only thing that's going to be visible is the X, the close or the, the X mark basically. All right, so now let's go ahead and save this. And you can see that we're not quite there yet. We still have a couple of things to do here. So we're gonna go ahead and create, let's say div class, and then we're going to call this one modal body, dash body. This is gonna be the middle part of our content. And inside of here, let's just add a paragraph tag. But I can actually do quite a bit here. I can add columns, I can add rows, I can add you know, scrollable areas, whatever I needed to inside of this body, it's really up to you. The last thing I'm going to do is actually create a footer. So let's go ahead and call this a class of footer, or modal footer, forgot the modal there. And let's create two buttons inside of here. So the first one, we're gonna say type, button and then we're going to call it or give it a class btn dash secondary and then also give this one data dash dismiss because this will close the window equals modal and this will actually have the text of close we're gonna create one more button, but instead of having to type all that out, I'm just gonna copy that, paste it there. I'm gonna get it rid of the data dash dismiss, and this is actually gonna be the primary one. We're not gonna have this do anything for now. It's just gonna be there just to show you that you can have a second option. So I'm gonna say save changes, and there we go. Now if I come back in here and hit refresh, you'll notice that some of the content is here, but it's actually not uh, taking the it's not looking exactly right or it's visible to begin with that's because we haven't actually added a id number or an id to the modal so we got to do that here in a second but i'm going to go ahead and come over here 
and I'm going to say ID and we named it my modal. All right, one thing I forgot to do is the ID actually needs to be on one more additional wrapper here. So I'm actually going to say div class and that class is going to be modal. And then I'm going to have another class that's going to be fade because it's going to fade in. And the ID is going to be there on that modal. And the role equals dialog needs to be on that as well. So this actually needs to be contained. The entire modal needs to be inside of that class, inside of that div tag. So I'm going to take the closing div tag, kind of adjust this a little bit. So we have the modal, modal dialog, modal content, modal header, modal title, and so on. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And you can see now it takes this away. As soon as I click on this, then this pops up with modal title. I can hit close and that closes that out. Now I do have one problem with the close button. Let me go ahead and just get rid of that close text. And so I'm gonna inside of there, instead of the close, I'm actually gonna create this X with the at times and then semicolon. Now, as soon as I hit okay, there we go. Now it has this close button there that I can use. All right, so now we have this popping up. So as soon as I click on show modal, it then slides in. We have our close and we have our save changes. One other thing I forgot to do on the button was add the BTN class as well as the BTN-secondary and BTN-primary. Uh, that's why we're not getting the styles there exactly. And there we go. Now we're getting the styles for Bootstrap and it's looking a lot better. So we have this modal showing up. We have this modal actually going away when I dismiss it. Uh, clicking on the X, it'll go away. And also just clicking anywhere in the shade will go away as well. Let's actually talk about some of the customization we can do, a little bit of the CSS that we can actually do. And you can actually do this without CSS. A couple things you can do without CSS to begin with is you can actually make this large and you can make it small. Right now it's kind of a medium size, but if you wanted this to take up a very large amount of size, you can do that just by adding a simple class to your dialog. So I can come in here and I can say modal-lg, standing for large, and what will happen is it'll now take up a lot more room. Even though I don't have a lot of text to begin with, it still takes up a lot more room. Well, I can actually change that to SM, standing for small. Let me go back in here, forgot to delete the L. So let's just say SM, hit refresh, and now it's really small. So the medium is there by default. You can make it large or you can make it small and just by adding that one extra class to the dialog. So that is one option that you can do to kind of resize it. All right, so now we can actually call the modal by using JavaScript. So let's go into our code here, and we're gonna go ahead and create an on ready event using jQuery. And so this is, uh, we're just calling the document saying, okay, on ready, we're gonna have these functions in here so we can call the events when something is clicked. So what I wanna do is I want to say, okay, well, let's give this an ID, our first button here. We're gonna give it an ID. And that ID is going to be JS modal. That way we know what to actually call or that's how we can trigger inside of jQuery that when this button is clicked, then call this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this code in saying, hey, when JS modal is on the click event, let's go ahead and run some code. So all I need to do is actually name the, through jQuery, I need to point to my modal, which is what the ID is for my modal, and I just need to say, hey, modal. This basically is going to call the modal just through JavaScript, so I don't have to type in the extra data dismiss or, sorry, the data, let's go back in here and see exactly what it was. So I don't have to type in like the data toggle or the data, data target. Um, so just, there's a little bit less code there. But if I click on this now, it calls the same modal. So if you need to run through some logic and then call the modal, that's a way to do it inside of JavaScript. Now, one more thing I wanna do is actually call some code. So we, this is when it's clicked, but let's call some code when it's actually not clicked or when it's dismissed. And so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste this here. And it's the same thing, but we're saying, hey, modal, my modal, when you're hidden, and I'm using hidden.bs.modal, it's actually going to run this function. And it's just going to do a simple alert. So as soon as this is closed, let's go ahead and call this, but I close it, it's going to run that alert, since that's a way to call some code after your modal's actually been closed out. 
All right, so one other thing I just want to cover on the JavaScript, you'll notice in my example, if you go to learningdojo.net, you notice in my example, I've modified the close button a little bit. I've taken away the radius on the buttons and the radius on the pop-up and kind of adjusted the shadow a little bit as well. If you want to check that out, it's just simple CSS, box shadow, border radius, and then adjusting the font size on the close, I adjusted it to 30. Adjusted the font weight, which made it a little bit more thinner, to 300. And then I adjusted the margin top to push down, push up a negative 10 pixels as well to kind of position it in the exact position that I wanted. So you can check that out at learningdojo.net. But that is how you get started with bootstrap modals. So if you have any questions, feel free to make them in the comments. Or don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this.